Hey, I'm gonna show you how to make a YouTube thumbnail in Photoshop. The thumbnail is the main factor in determining if your video gets the click. So I'm gonna share my screen here and show you how you can make your thumbnails pop. All right guys, so I'm not gonna show you every little detail, I'm just gonna walk through the beginning parts and focus mainly on the Photoshop. For this video, I'm actually gonna make the thumbnail of this video in this video. It's thumbnailception. So the first part is just you know, grabbing a still shot from some footage I have that I like. We're gonna find one here, we'll just step in frame by frame. Try to find something where you're pointing that draws attention to the subject. So I'm just gonna take a snapshot. I happen to be using CyberLink PowerDirector, but really any video software will work. Thumb start. Save that as thumb start. All right, so we got our base image to work with. Now let's, uh, Look for a background. So I'm gonna go in Pixabay here, I already searched cool background. And so we'll pick this. So sometimes you can just use the background that's already in your image, and other times you can uh, put a new background in there, something more fitting to what you're trying to do. So this time we're gonna try this one. All right, so we're gonna open both of these in Photoshop. So obviously they're you know, not the right size, but we'll see how that works in a bit. First thing I usually do is select me or the subject. We wanna cut that out. So we look on the left side here. I like to use the polygonal lasso tool. So basically it's just gonna help us select something and then copy the pixels. You can use the magnetic lasso or the lasso, but polygonal is my favorite because it gives you the most direct control. So we're just gonna start in the bottom right corner and just outline me, the subject. You don't have to do a perfect job, but just do a decent job. Because I'm trying to show you how to make a YouTube thumbnail in Photoshop pretty quickly. It's not gonna be as fast as Canva or anything, but it offers you the most control and customization. You can really do anything in Photoshop. And this is Photoshop CS6 but this will work with the Creative Cloud or, you know, CS4, 3, 2, they all have the lasso. But yeah, hair is usually a tricky part, but I can show you how to make that better in a bit. I just draw a line across the bottom there. So we've selected me, and now we're going to control C. We copy all the pixels, and then we're going to try to paste in here. Okay, so it's gonna be all right. So that picture is big, bigger than the picture of me. So we're going to be able to make this a rectangle like we need it. So if we want, we can do that first. So we're gonna go on the left here and find the crop tool, uh, then right click 16 by nine. That's the, the ratio here that we need, like they say, we'll crop it. All right, so now we can go over to the right here and with the navigator, tool, you can zoom in. You can also drag the bottom right corner to have a bigger view. And also you can click the two keys on your keyboard, control plus, plus, <laughs> control and plus to zoom in, make it bigger, control minus to make it smaller. Little tricks for you. All right, so there's me. It's a little sloppy. So if we want, we can fix that up really quick. So one thing you can do is do the lasso again and just use the navigator and zoom in. Oh, by the way, if you miss the navigator, you don't have it, you go to window up at the top and then these are all your things that you can make visible. Like if you want the history, it opens up right here. Navigator is already there, so we're, we're good to go. So yeah, I'm gonna take the lasso and just kinda just cut out some of the nonsense. You don't have to have it exactly as it was in real life. It's more what you want it to look like, not what it is. So like, obviously I have more hair than I'm showing here, but I'd rather have it look good. <laughs> I'm not gonna get every little strand captured. Just make it look decent. Um, and if you want, you can even make it even more smooth out. Just get a good shape. What do you think it should look like? Like I said, I'm just trying to do it quicker, so I'm gonna use this uh, drop here. It's the blur tool. 
And strength, you can go at the top, make it a little stronger, maybe 75. And then to make the brush bigger or smaller, you use the bracket keys on the keyboard. So bracket right, bigger, smaller. So just make it like twice the size of the line you're drawing and just kind of go over with the blur. It's going to soften it. So there's that. And if you want to make the hair a little better, sure, we can do that. So I'm going to start with the smudge tool just to smudge the hair a little bigger. Oops. So I'm going to do strength, maybe 30, and then press my bracket keys, make the lines a little smaller. And here you can kind of like draw. You're just kind of smudging the hair out. I don't know if other people do this. This is just kind of something I figured out. But you can see it's what you want it to look like. This isn't the reality. But no one's going to know that this isn't what my hair is like if I do a really good job. And if you want to get a little more strength to save time and go up to 40%, maybe a little bigger brush for a bigger thing of hair here. I know, I kind of screwed up this part, but bear with me here. Zoom out, looks pretty good. All right, so that's the hair. The next step that I always like to do is put an outer glow around me. So you click, just double click, you go to the layers in the bottom right corner. If you don't have layers, you go up to window and there's layers, or you can press F7, I guess. So you have that, double click on layer one, and then here you got your layer style menu. And you go down to Outer Glow, click on that, or click the checkbox. And I usually like to go to Normal up here in the Blend Mode. Screen and Lighten are also good, but Normal is going to show up the most, most visible. Especially if I have a light background, the Screen and Lighten are not even going to be visible. So, we can pick our color. Let's start with Red, because Red stands out. You can always change it. The elements here, spread and size, those are the two most important. So spread is kind of like how far the mass exp you know, expands. Size, you really don't need much for what I do. Like just one is fine. Or you don't even need any. And then you just use the size to kind of make it how you like. You can do a lot, just a tiny bit. And like, see, this looks kind of sloppy. We can fix that here. I'll show you. So just leave it like that. Click on the left side, do the eraser. It's most likely from when I was drawing the hair with the smudge tool. But we don't need it that big, so we'll double click on layer one. Go to the outer glow and just make it a little smaller. So this is one option. You can just have one outer glow here. And you can pick any color you want. Since we have a blue background, we're not going to do a blue glow. That'd be dumb. But we can do white. White's usually good if we have a darker background. But we have a light background. So I think we want a dark glow. And, you know, I'm thinking, let's do red. Red is pretty noticeable. But hey, there's something else we can do. So, so you got your outer glow. Click OK. And now what I like to do is double click on layer 1 right on the text. Rename it to Matt 1. That's number one. Now, with that selected, we click Control A to select all, and then Control C to copy, Control V. There. So now there's two of me. Make sure they line up over each other exactly. Rename this Matt 2, and then Matt 2, we're going to do the outer glow again. So double click somewhere on the, the layer. Outer glow. So we're going to make this one white. See, look, we got two layers, two layers of outer glow. I haven't really seen anyone else do it this way like I do with the two layers, kind of like the lightsaber effect. So the layer with the white, you want to be smaller because the red's like the background. So you have just a little bit of white. So the white's just like the immediate outline, just like a lightsaber. And then the red extends farther out. You can change the opacity if you want it to be less noticeable or make it full 100%. Opaque, so then it's really strong. I, you know, I'm thinking we'll do like 86. We'll keep it kind of strong. All right, go back to this one. You know, we can play around and tinker with this all we want. I don't want it to be super crazy. I don't like when it's like really big. 
but we'll, we'll do kind of big and then I'll show you something. In quality here, you can change the range. That also is another thing you can do to enhance the look. And I'll show you really quick. Here's what lightens. This is screen. This is normal, dissolve, lighten. They hardly show up unless you have a dark background. So normal's good. We'll do that. And now we're gonna, so on the right here, select mat two, control. So now control select both, just like files. Now you can move it around if you're selecting the, the cursor here. So you select it. Uh, and now we're gonna do control T. And that brings us into transform, transform the size really. And we're just gonna make it smaller because I don't wanna cover, I don't wanna take up the whole image. And we're gonna put me in the bottom right corner. This is what basically everyone does. And the reason being is because there's a timestamp it shows up like right here in the thumbnail, you know, right here. And that, uh, that's always covering something, so why not have it cover the person's chest? Because, you know, that's not really useful real estate in the thumbnail. So we'll go like this. I think that's good. So just click on any of the tools in the left there to bring up this menu, which lets you apply what you just did. Apply the tree transform. Uh, that's good. If you want something that really stands out, it's probably on the less professional side, but it's pretty cool. I'll show you right now. So this is a really simple trick you can do. So go over on the left, uh, look for this, it's clone stamp, and then click on the bracket tool. Click on the bracket on your keyboard, make the brush any size you want. Now you're gonna click the Alt key. That's like your selector, like, hey, what do I wanna clone? Click on my big forehead. And then go over to the right here, and you can see it's kind of previewing what you will be drawing. Just kind of draw a little bit. Now you got like a ghost, a little ghosting, kind of just like someone's gonna double take, like, wait, wait a second, what is that? So we don't, we'll keep that just to show you like what's possible. Kind of something to make the thumbnail stand out. I don't really see this anywhere. I know people know about the clothes stamp, but you don't see the ghosting trick used in a lot of thumbnails. Now I gotta be pointing at something. What am I pointing at? Let's put a logo in there. All right guys, if you wanna see more videos where I teach you stuff like this, hit that subscribe button down below. Let me know in the comments if you want me to teach you anything else YouTube related. And if you wanna check out any of my other videos, you can watch one right here, or you can watch one right here. I'm Matt Magna with Passive Flows. We'll see you next time.